Hello there, Anxious Cynic back again, continuing our beginner's guide series in Minimator. And today we're going to be getting into how to animate with keyframes. So let's get right into it. So you may have noticed the keyframing that we did before, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and test it out on this Steve character here. So I'm going to click this arrow to drop down all of his body parts so we can select them easily here in the timeline. I'm already flubbing words. So the first thing to note is initially there won't be any keyframes. Like a key frame is automatically placed if you move something so if I do like this to the head and I'm gonna right click on this parameter here so that it's not actually moved but you'll see that that created a keyframe so that's one way to create a keyframe another way is to simply double click in the timeline wherever you want a keyframe to appear so what I'm gonna do is just click and drag and highlight both of those keyframes and hit the delete key on my keyboard alternatively you can use these buttons down here I just typically use keyboard shortcuts. So what I'm going to do initially is I want this to say be the starting pose for Steve. So what I can do is actually click and drag just like this over Steve's body parts and you'll see that that highlights all of them. And I'm going to use a little trick here. I'm going to drop down the keyframe thing here, the little keyframe tab. I'm going to click invisible and visible. And as you can see, that's a little feature there that makes someone invisible and then you can make them reappear at a later point. But what that did is it basically didn't change anything with the character and we automatically created these keyframes here to be our base position. Alternatively, you know, you could just have everything highlighted and then just move something like that and then reset it and then that same thing would happen. But this little visible tick here is one of the easier ways to do it so you don't actually get unwanted results. So let's say we just want to animate Steve doing something pretty simple. Like let's say we want him to uh, to wave or something. So I may not want him to move right away. So the first thing you need to know about keyframing is let's say I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use the left arm here. We can click it here in the 3D view if you recall. And I'm going to go and set a keyframe right about here on frame 30. So that's going to be about one second in our timeline as you can see there. And say in that second I want him to raise his arm like so. So what's going to happen if I hit stop to go back to the beginning and I hit play, he's going to automatically just start raising his arm. Well, I may not want that. I want him to start raising his arm maybe at that point. Maybe I want it to wait a second and then he moves his arm. So basically what I can do to accomplish that, this can be done in a couple of different ways, but one of the simplest ways is we're going to copy this position here. So this keyframe here is where we want him to stay and then we want him to begin moving that at frame 30. So I can double click this keyframe here and you'll see that it turns white and now we have these other options down here. This is copy the selected keyframe and that's what we want to do. I can also hit control C on the keyboard but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just go ahead and click that button there and then wherever I hover the mouse if I hit control V on my keyboard it will paste that keyframe. Now I'm going to undo that real quick and I believe let's go ahead and move the cursor up here. We're just going to click on the timeline there and I'm going to hit this button here to paste the copied keyframe and it'll paste it wherever that cursor is. So it kind of depends on what your workflow is. To me using the keyboard shortcuts control C to copy control V to paste is uh, a little bit quicker. So now we've got this keyframe copied here and this position is thus copied. So if I go back and I hit play. I'm using the space bar to play by the way. That's uh, the keyboard shortcut for that. And you'll see that he waits until frame 25 but his arm shoots up really quickly. So the reason that is is the movement takes place with the duration that you have between your keyframes. So for instance you may recall that we have Minimator set up to be about one second per 30 keyframes. So if I want his arm to go up in about one second as we had it in the beginning then we need to move this keyframe out far enough about 30 frames in order to make that happen in one second so since we have this at frame 25 and let's say i want him to wait a full second then i'm just going to take this one and drag it up like so by double clicking on it and clicking and dragging and then i'm going to take this one and do the same thing i'm going to double click click and drag and then now it's on frame 60. so what we have now is one second while he's standing that way and then one second for his arm to come up. So if I drag that back, it's gonna wait a second, his arm will come up in one second 
and there we go. So you may be wondering at this point, like, what about timing in your animation? Like, how do you make things time well and like look good and whatnot? That's a little bit more advanced, I would say. Um, there's certain elements that are kind of like just the feel of it. You want to just go with whatever you think works naturally. One thing I would recommend, especially for new animators, is try not to worry too much about making it look utterly realistic right at the get-go. One thing to remember is that this is Minecraft and the Minecraft animation in the game itself is kind of suited for the style and the visual look of Minecraft. So I would probably practice, I'd recommend practicing with just trying to make it look good in terms of what looks good in Minecraft and then like build up from there to what makes a realistic movement. So now that we've got that done, we've uh, got this arm coming up here and let's just say maybe that's a little bit too slow. So we can click on this, we can drag it back. So now at 45, that's gonna be 15 frames. So that means this will come up in half a second. So if I do like that, that's a little bit better. But one thing to note is that it's coming up very linearly. And you may notice since we dropped down this keyframe tab here, we have linear in a transition. So I have a video on all this stuff on animating with keyframes and then another video on transitions. You guys can watch that if you want to. I'll try to include at least one of those in the cards at the end of the video. But to go over it quickly, uh, basically what it is is transitions will alter the speed and the type of movement that you have between keyframes. So let's say with this keyframe, I want it to not just go straight up like that. I want it to kind of have a more fluid motion. So I can click on this here. I can click on instant and basically instant is just going to make it hold that position until the next keyframe. So if we watch that, then you'll see that his arm just kind of pops up there. Boop. It just actually instantly transitions from one keyframe to the next. That can be good for moving the camera around or like certain effects within your animation, but we'll get to that in another part. Uh, for now, we just want to make it look more fluid. So what you basically have here in the transitions options is three different types of transitions. So you have ease in, and basically what that's going to do, as you can see that kind of bell curve there or whatever you want to call it, it eases up. So what that means is when I click on that, his arm will kind of slowly begin to move up and then kind of speed up towards the end, as you can see there, just like so. If I click on this and we're going to change it to ease out and this is quadratic you have different versions of these and you can kind of see the lines differing for each type of transition there but this is just the basic three types that you'll have uh, if i click on this one then it will move instantly but then kind of slow down towards the end as you can see there so that gives it a little bit more of a dynamic kind of fluid motion and then thirdly you have the ease in and ease out quadratic as in this particular little block of transitions and uh, what that will do is do both of those it will ease it in and ease it out so you get this kind of slowly out slowly in motion and as you can see there that kind of has a warping effect in a way like it's slow then it's fast and it's slow again so you may have to play with the timing of your keyframes in order to get the look that you want so if i say that this is a little bit too fast now while it was pretty slow with linear now that we have these transitions on it it's kind of warping the time a little bit so we may need to drag this back out so let's go back to one second in length and then you'll see you can see that transition happen a little better there where it's slowly beginning slowly ending i would say this is also too slow so you can kind of just play around with the position of your keyframes to get the timing that you want that's not too terrible so uh let's go ahead and move his arm up a little bit now one thing to note is the timing between keyframes will also depend on how exaggerated the movement is so if i bring his arm up here then it's going to move a little faster because it's got more to do within that amount of time so if i took his arm I bring it just over here then you'll see that this happens pretty slowly because there's not that much movement going on in that amount of time so just things that you'll have to play with and kind of get used to it so let's just bring his arm up here I'm gonna click in on my mouse wheel and that will bring up this move tool and that way I can drag the timeline easily whichever way I want to go and uh, what I'm gonna do is just have this go about every 15 frames maybe and we're just going to drag his arm down a little bit more. And you should notice down here that the transition is actually inherited from the last transition. So this one where we had his arm up does not have any special transitions applied. It's just linear. So if I change this one to the ease in, ease out, and then I change this one to the ease in, ease out, then the next keyframe I create 
will automatically inherit that transition. So you're going to want to keep up with those and make sure you're using the ones that you want for any particular movement. So I'm going to move that back up and then we're going to go about one second from this point, which should be, this is 10 frames, 20 frames, 30 frames. So we're going to go right here and we're going to bring his arm back down by just right clicking on the parameter there that we're editing. And now his arm is back down. So I'm going to zoom out on my timeline here by scrolling with my mouse wheel. And as you can see there, we can see more real estate of what we're working with. I'm just going to go ahead and click off of Steve to get rid of that uh, little editor there. And we're going to play this and see what it looks like. And there you go. There's a basic little wave with Steve. Got some nice transitions on it. We've got some timing going on there. We can edit that timing any way we want to by bringing these keyframes closer together or further apart. Uh, one last thing that I'm going to cover in this tutorial is a lot of people have asked me, what is the best transitions? Like what transitions do you use and things like that? Well, to be honest, there's no best transition. You can't just like pick one of these and it's going to work for every single scenario. So what I recommend is using these, experimenting with them, getting used to how they work and what they do, and then developing kind of a sense for what's going to work for each movement and what you're trying to do. Because there's any number of ways that you can animate something, not just in Minimator, but in any program. So one particular transition type isn't going to help you do everything you may want to do. All right, so now that we've got that little animation there, what I want to do is show you a little trick that you can use when you're working on an animation to play it back and kind of get a sense of what's going on with it. So let's say if I want to play this animation here. And it does okay, but the timeline cursor just keeps on moving. So what if I just want to play this part right here? Well, I can click on the loop or repeat option here. And when I click play, you'll see that that comes up. It plays it and then it repeats back just like so. And I can just watch that over and over and kind of get an idea of what it's looking like. Now, one little feature here that I want to cover, this is a little bit kind of out of the way, but it might be helpful. If you've worked on an animation and then you're kind of looking at a previous part that you animated and it's not looking quite up to your standards and you just want to watch that part over and over. So let me say if I go, let me put a keyframe right over here at frame 200. Now if I hit play, you will see that it plays it and it's going to repeat, but it's going to go on down to that last keyframe. So say you've animated like a minute of your animation, you're going to play like that whole minute before it repeats. So what we can do, we're going to leave the repeat on. I'm going to go to right here on the little timeline ruler. I'm going to right click and hold it and drag it out. And you'll see that we get this little selection here. So I'm going to do like that. And then you get these little... Uh, widgets here if you set it and you want to kind of expand it or bring it back in. I'm going to put it right about there or something like that's pretty close. I can zoom in if I need to get more specific, make sure everything is lined up the way I want it to. And now when I hit play, it's only going to play this selection. So that way you can kind of control. You can even use this when you're rendering an animation. You can use this to render only a section of it instead of the whole animation and things like that. But this is a useful tool for when you're animating so you can actually just play back a single part and uh, not worry about having to reset the, the cursor on the timeline or anything like that over and over. So that's going to do it for this keyframe animation tutorial, guys. I hope it was helpful. Hopefully it gave you a platform for starting off. If you liked the video, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends, your family, and your pets, and I will see you guys in the next part.